Hello, I'm Greg Taylor, Partner and Head of Banking and Finance at MHA. Today, I want to talk to you about full capital expensing. Full capital expensing is the replacement for the super deduction that was announced in the Chancellor's budget. Super deduction ends or concludes at the end of this month, April, uh, March, and its successor is full capital expensing, which is 100% tax relief on plant, machinery and IT equipment purchased after the 1st of April 2023. Now, full capital expensing, I believe, could become the dynamo at the heart of a UK economic rebound. But there are a couple of issues with full capital expensing, one macro and one micro. On a macro level, full capital expensing isn't funded after the next election. The effect of this could be stronger investment in the short term, but weaker investment in the long term if the scheme isn't made permanent. Without the permanent impact of full capital expensing, all you are potentially doing is stealing some investment from the future because businesses might think it's sensible to move forward their investment decisions to take advantage of the tax relief with the expectation that it won't be continued. Full capital expensing needs to be made permanent for the long term impact on growth to be seen, because generally investments are long term decisions. On a micro level, let me give you a very simplified example that I have written down here. Imagine you are investing £100 in whatever plant or machinery. This investment you reckon should help you generate £105 in income within a few years. Under the rules, pre-super deduction, you could write off that cost against your tax bill. Since 19% of £100 is £19, then the effect, then the then in effect rather, the plant or machinery really cost you £81. The idea of the super deduction was you get to write off 130% of your investment in plant and machinery. So multiply that £100 by 130, you get 130. Multiply it by 19% corporation tax rate at the time, and that's £24.70 of tax you can write off. So the cost of the plant and machinery drops to £75.30, which is good news, right? Now recall that the Chancellor in his budget also said that he was going ahead with raising corporation tax from 19 to 25% next month in April. Think about what this means for your deductions. You're buying plant or machinery for £100, getting 19% off them in a tax write-off, so £81 cost to you. You still, though, expect to make £105 in income within a few years from using the plant and machinery. But when the corporation tax goes up, you'll be charged 25% in tax on that. So that equals £78.75 in post-tax income. Think about it. You're making a loss on your investment because you're putting in £81 of your own money for a post-tax return that comes out lower. Now, the very nature of a corporation tax rise would potentially discourage investment. So if you're in the Treasury trying to ensure this doesn't happen, what would you do? Well, you'd introduce a tax incentive to keep people investing. In other words, a bigger than 100% deduction. And it turns out the size of deduction you'd need to cancel out the disincentive is, guess what, 130%, i.e. the super deduction. But the new full capital expensing initiative has a lower tax relief rate than the super deduction it's replacing. Full capital expensing is only at 100% and 100 tax relief. Full capital expensing could certainly cause a big boost to investment, but it does imply that far from being a stimulus measure, the net result of this policy is simply to shift a lot of investment that might have happened in a few years from now into the next three years. There's an argument that the sooner investment happens, the sooner investment will start paying off. But my advice would be companies should take advice and understand the impact of any planned investment in the light of full capital expensing. If you would like to hear more views about the budget, please see the MHA Hub.